Smart's Wednesday webinar. Um, Kevin from Smart here. The, this is one of a series of um, webinars that we've run this term. We've got one more to go and we will be next term having another series of webinars. P please feel free to uh, ping us at the inquiries at Smart email address at our website. I'll put the website up at the end if you have any um, topics that you'd like covered up on these. Today we've got Crystal Ryan moderating with us um, and I'm presenting. <coughs> if you have a question, I'll do all the questions at the end, um, but please feel free, just enter them in the um, question box and Crystal will read them out at the end. So today's webinar is really about Smart's new directions in hardware and software. It'll be a brief overview, there's a lot to cover off. Um, but hopefully um, it'll give you a bit of an idea of where SMART's heading. So uh, SMART, just so you know, they um, really it's a combination of their hardware and software that actually improves learning outcomes. We, we people often talk to us about um, can I just buy the hardware or can I just buy the software. In fact, the, the two work beautifully in conjunction. Um, so, and you'll hear a little bit about that today as I go through the webinar. So the, um, <coughs> me. the smart boards um, for 2017 are the smart board 7000 series, which I'll give you a good look at through the webinar. They're not in Australia at the moment, um, but it's, it'll be the flagship um, board for smart. The 6000 series, which is in a lot of schools already at the moment, and your resellers have um, demo stock of the 6000 series. So if there's interest in those, you can see those. Um, we can put you in contact with schools that have them if you'd like to organise a visit or put you in contact with a reseller. And the third board um, is the Smart 2000 series. It's a non-interactive board, and it, it addresses a particular need in the market that Smart's identified. Um, again, the 7000 and the 2000 series are currently not available in Australia. Probably late September is the kind of the date that we're looking at. So the 7000 series, um, quite a detailed slide here. I won't go in, into it in as much detail, but basically uh, Smarts looked at how to improve the touch experience for teachers. You'll notice on the board um, we've returned to you four pens and a duster, but you still have all the um, interactivity of um, as you would at a 6000 series board. Um, it's 16 points of touch, so that's a fairly significant increase. Um, it's 4K and it will be, as I say, the, the flagship um, model for Smart. I'll just point to this convenience panel here on the right. It's probably not as clear in the pictures I'd like, but that's actually tilted at about 45 degrees to towards the teacher, and we'll just talk a little bit about that. Um, the 7000 series has a lot of inputs and outputs. On the back of the board, um, you can see there's a lot of inputs that we can use here, and that convenience panel, you'll also notice, has some inputs available to you. Hopefully you can see there's a, it's about a 45 degree tilt, the whole concept being it's an easy way for the teacher to uh, turn the board off and on, use the volume, have an input or an output without actually having to go to the back of the board. So major kind of design change there for Smart, but um, that all, most of Smart's design changes just so you know are predicated on what teachers ask for. The four pens themselves, um, slight difference than the 6000 series in that they are battery, but as we can see, if you charge them for just one minute, you get 10 minutes use. When they're fully charged, full day, one and a half um, days out of a full full charge. So, and once they're placed on the board, they're always charging. So it's it's only if you leave them lying around. Fair bit of um, research gone into the pens. The the pen is identified as the teacher's intuitive tool, and also for students to use. But it's got a really good feel, a really good texture, and it's very very easy to use. So with the 7000 series and the 6000 series, probably one of the key things that we need to talk about is Smart's IQ technology. So basically at the bottom of the board here, I have a little flick up menu um, 
and I'll just work you through what these things are. And we're actually getting a good look at the board here with the convenience panel. So as I work through, <coughs> pardon me, basically your uh, Smart 7000 series or 6000 series is also your whiteboard. It's really um, important with the whiteboarding, you can save to the board. So we've got some little thumbnails here. If I were to click on any of these thumbnails, that digital whiteboarding contact would come back to me. Um, or if I want to, I can um, actually join the board by Bluetooth using any device. Everything Smart does is basically device agnostic. Once I join the board, I can then save information to my device. That means I can take it from board to board, even though it's whiteboarding, and I can distribute it to up to 250 students. So we've got a few options there in terms of our whiteboarding capabilities. So it's just part of our IQ technology. Um, it's probably where Smart really started with its um, 6000 series, um, looking at using whiteboarding for teachers as, with, as well as combining it with a display device. If, um, as I say, the 7000 series won't be in Australia till probably late September, but you can see whiteboarding in 6000 series, um, and it's a really intuitive experience for the teacher, just like writing on a whiteboard, but you can now save and reuse your notes. The next part of our uh, IQ, and don't forget this is available on the 7000 and the 6000 series, is we can now populate the board with notebooks. So um, it's, um, we can do this via, we can share to the board using Notebook 17, which I'll talk a little bit more about later on. We can use a USB key. Um, so uh, basically, we can run our notebooks just by touching them at the board. We don't necessarily have to have a computer attached to the board. So next feature is AMP. And I'll talk about some of the improvements that have been made in AMP during the, um, during the webinar towards the end. But basically, I can click on this icon and go straight out to AMP. Just for those people who aren't using AMP, um, it's a fantastic collaborative space for students. We, um, if you have LS, S, SLS, Smart Learning Suite, you have, you have AMP. So, and we'll happily um, help you to show you how to implement that. We did a webinar recently on that, so please feel free to go back and have a look. But straight out to your AMP workspaces. We also have um, smart lab activities. These can be put on the board. Um, you can click on them, play them. They're interactive. Students can come up to the board. Again, you can see that Smart is building on its SLS experience. So we've got our notebook, we've got our AMP spaces, we've got our lab experience, all at the board. And you don't have to have a computer connected for this to happen. Um, also, without a computer attached, um, as long as you're on Wi-Fi, you, we have a built-in browser. Our preferred browser is Chrome at the moment, but there's some nice things with that. Um, as a teacher, I can just pick up a pen, I can ink over, I could perhaps be running a video, click on the video and pause it and write to the board using my pens. Um, I can go to interactive um, websites and ha still have an interactive experience just by using my fingers at the board. So really great way um, to use uh, the, the internet at the board and uh, even just bring students up for an interactive experience with interactive websites. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, Okay, probably one of the key things that SMART have done with the 6000 and 7000 series is um, we've incorporated screen sharing. We know that a lot of schools um, are using Apple TV or Chromecast and things like that. But basically with SMART, we're device agnostic. So um, as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi wi wi network as the board, um, there's no need for an Apple TV, there's no need for um, Chromecast. Basically, um, we just ask the student to share and there's some really uh, good uh, things with that. So again, I'll just go back to that slide because it is fairly important. I'll just stress that again, as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi, 
uh, you can share any student's device to the board, um, same as you would if you were using an Apple TV or Chromecasting, but it's all actually built into the board for you. Okay, the 6000 series, as I've said, it's uh, all the IQ technology we just saw in the 7000 series is available to you. All your whiteboarding is available to you. Nice thing is it's here already. Um, you can go to a reseller or some local school and see these. You'll notice it as a black and a red pen. Um, slightly smaller iteration of um, our flat screen panel, but a really great cost effective solution. So, okay. The, so the 7000 series is probably late September and similarly the Smart 2000 series. So the 2000 series is really to fill a niche in the market that um, Smart recognised. A lot of schools, um, probably partly due to budget, are putting in flat screen TVs. Um, flat screen TVs tend to not be interactive as we know. Um, but those flat screen TVs are a very passive experience for the students and for the teacher. So what Smart's tried to do is it's um, incorporated its screen sharing, even though it's not a, um, it's a non-interactive display, but we've taken all the best features um, of our other boards and put them into this board. So it's still uh, 4K, uh, you get a remote control, it's got a lot of flexibility, you get Smart Learning Suite, one year subscription with it, um, you can screen share. So it really um, is probably, I think about it as an adjunct to the 7 and 6000 series, but for those schools that are looking, I'll just get a TV, I would strongly suggest rather than buy a TV, a Chromecast key and an Apple TV, have a look at Smart's pricing on these when they come out. Um, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So that Smart uh, 2000 series, platform agnostic, um, that, so when you go to screen share, anything you want to share you can, and we can see some of the options there. There's no apps needed, there's no additional hardware, and a great 4K screen at a reasonable price. So where might we use this? Uh, interesting here, so we've got a classroom with one of our 6000 series boards at the front, but complementary to that down the side for small group collaboration, we have a couple of our screens in that classroom. Uh, huddle spaces, libraries, um, you know, places where students share and collaborate. They may want to hear, show what they're working on, they would throw up to the screen. Okay. Um, even down to um, most schools we go into these days often have a display at, um, at the front entrance or along the corridors. So don't don't hesitate to use the 2000 series for something like that. Um, again, don't forget we can screen share, so we've got greater flexibility than we would have with just a flat screen TV, and you get all those nice things that Smart offers in terms of software. So a fair few options there for you. Um, how I see the three um, boards is probably for schools, some schools may go we'll just put 7000 series through, um, some might go we'll just put six, but I would look probably at a blending of the three boards, um, particularly if you're doing an e-learning hardware kind of plan over the next couple of years or you've got a new space. Um, the boards work together very, very in a very complementary manner with all our software. And don't forget, that's that sweet spot that we're looking for in terms of improving learning outcomes. Uh, all smart boards, just so you know, uh, five-star energy ratings. So smarts are very uh, corporately uh, aware, environmentally aware company. They also are careful with um, all their um, all their products are sourced from conflict-free. conflict, conflict free. There's been a lot of talk about this in terms of uh, conflict zones and human abuse. Smart's a very, very good corporate citizen. Please rest assured that everything we do in terms of pollution, um, energy star ratings, etc., cetera, um, are to the nth degree. And partly that's because we work with schools. So at just a summary of the Smart uh, uh, boards. So we've got Smart IQ built into the 7 and 6000 series, those, those extra features. Don't forget you can run that with all those features without a laptop. Um, 
we've got a normal kind of inking and touch experience, slightly different touch experience at the new 7000 series. You should get 50,000 hours from these boards, which is a huge amount of time. All the boards, these two boards have um, presence detection, so the board will power down and power up when it recognises that you're in the room. Um, 4K, um, glare free, and I don't know if you've ever touched one of our boards, but a, a really great experience to uh, to write on or to touch. So. Would strongly recommend when the 7000 series comes in, um, please try and get a, uh, a reseller to maybe bring in one and give you a demo. So, uh, there is comparison material around the boards. So, uh, in this one, the 4000 series is uh, mentioned as well. That's being um, end of life, so it's being gradually phased out. And the, th the three displays will be the 7, 6, and 2000 series. Okay. Um, Smart's also made some considerable improvements to its software. So basically, um, we are now up to Notebook 17. Um, I think when I started with Smart slightly less than two years ago, it was 15, so it's moved fairly quickly. But there's been some fantastic um, innovations with Smart. So uh, Smart Response been, has been updated. The key feature which I'll talk about today is this share to the board. And also there's been some work done around Smart Inc. So basically when you come into Notebook 17, the main difference you'll see is the welcome screen is slightly different. You can see that we can go to recent files or create a new file. We can learn the basics. We can go out and look at new features. But if you upgrade to 17, you're going to see this as your start screen. The experience other than that, very similar. Um, Smart builds nicely on its existing format. So even people who are on Notebook 11.4, uh, uh, to look at my screen isn't an unfamiliar experience, but it's all that good stuff in the background, such as lab and response that um, Smart work heavily at. So just moving along with the notebook, the basic thing that you will notice when you come into notebook is this new feature called share to the Smart board. So it's in your file menu. So I'm running 17 here. I won't do it because um, it will kind of save my file and it will take a second or two. But basically, we can share to the smart board uh, or share using a link. And there's a couple of reasons why we might do that. Basically, um, when we share to the smart board, we use an app. At the moment, it's available for the iPhone and iPhone iPad but it's coming for all other devices so we're given a, a link number um, and basically when we use that link number we can identify the board so here we pick our smart board and we share now that means that if I was using this notebook here this notebook would be sent to that board so a uh, fantastic thing, working Sunday night at home, you can go in the next morning, tap on the board and your notebook will be available for you at the board. The other option is we can actually share just using a link. So if I share using a link, I can, uh, so teacher one here has a really good notebook file. They want to share it with teacher tool. Basically they just share a link, similar to what we might do in Dropbox. Um, Really, this idea of sharing to the board and using a device really untethers the teacher from being bound to the front of the class. Okay, the other thing that there's been a lot of work done is in uh, Response2. If you haven't been using Response2, there's a fair few videos at our YouTube channel and there's a lot of support at our Smart um, website. But basically, um, We've got a few things we can do now. There's more to do with the teacher pace of what's happening. So the teacher can pause, talk about individual questions. They can actually have a practice with the students. Um, and um, just gives the teacher, the way response is done now, just gives the teacher significant control over what's happening between the activity or the, the assessment and the students. Um, the other thing is that export to Excel. If you're using a learning management system, once you've gone through, we've got enhanced reporting now. And um, 
Smart Response and Lab are both now totally a single sign-on. So you will, so I'll just show you in mine, if I go to account up here, you can see that I'm assigned in. I would I only sign in once and I sign in using um, <coughs> Office 365 or, um, um, Oh, sorry, my mind's gone blank. Uh, but there's a few ways to sign in. But basically, I then am given a number, and that number. So that's my number that is particular for me. So um, my students only have to deal with that number once. Any time I start a smart response or a smart lab, um, the students, if they've been with me once, they just follow me. So uh, in the old days, you used to have a new number every time you wanted to start something. So, but this single sign-in is a great idea and makes uh, your life much easier as a teacher. Um, SmartAmp has had a little bit of an update. Um, I'm not sure um, if you're using SmartAmp. Don't forget, if you've bought um, Smart SLS, you have access to AMP and it's a virtual space for students to work in. Um, been a fair few improvements made to SmartAmp. Um, so I'll just take you through a few of them. So I'll just leave this slide up there for a little bit. So basically the uh, notebook, we can drop notebooks into SmartAmp and that's been, it used to just be a viewer but um, that's improved. Got a lot more options around sharing workspaces, how we use groups, how we add students and how we work with Google. Don't forget SmartAmp is predicated on Google domains and Google logins. Um, any school can get those for nothing and we've got lots of assistance around setting an AMP up. As I said, we did do a webinar earlier um, in this series about implementing AMP and please feel free, it's at our YouTube channel. So just clicking through, um, the notebook viewer, so if I see here, I'm in an AMP space, um, I've dropped a notebook into AMP. In the old days, it was just really a viewer, there was little interact activity with it, but now I can actually move objects, I can use my uh, pull tabs, I can do stuff within uh, my notebook viewer. It is still slightly limited, things like um, certain things like 3D objects which are, are looking for a little, a fair bit of computer grunt in the background, you're probably just going to see an image, but notebook viewer is much more interactive now in the smart space, in the app space. A lot more integration in terms of uh, Google, Google Classrooms and making that easier for you. We've done that because if you've got existing Google Classroom accounts, basically you can just bring these into Smart AMP and um, uh, Smart AMP will, will look, look after that for you. And also we can share workspaces to Gmail accounts. Um, if the Gmail account will be uh, the smart amp space will be sent via a link um, if the person is an amp user they've got the ability to edit but if not they'll just see the workspace uh, I was immediately thinking fantastic if we're doing a project in an amp space for maybe um, on grandparents day we could actually send the grandparents the workspace and they could see it Okay, um, also Smart Amp bookmarks, and I'll just pop over to Smart Amp. So I, here I'm live in Smart Amp, but I'm just going to go to my bookmarks. So a new feature is if I click on the bookmarks, you can see that I can, whoops, you can see that I can move around um, backward and forward, very easy to add a bookmark. This used to be available to you. Um, you used to just have to kind of click on the bookmark, but now we've got an easier way of navigating. The um, other feature is our groups are now much more easy to edit. So if I click on, I used to just see my group, but now if I click on my group, I see who's in there, I can open their workspace, and from within the group, I can actually edit the group. So a lot more flexibility in terms of um, working within the work, AMP workspace, giving us tools like this navigation, like editing in the workspace. Okay, uh, so just to summarise, um, it's we, we do try to keep these two limited to half an hour, so um, and we do that being very mindful of teachers' time. So I'll just quickly summarise today. Basically, during 2017, Smart will be introducing its um, 7,000 series board, which will be the flagship board for Smart, 
and the 2000 series, which is a non-interactive board, but gives you a lot of smart features. Um, and they should be here towards the end of the year. The other significant change, Notebook 17, that share feature is a significant change within the software. The fact that you can now just send and link notebooks, plus there's been some um, improvements to Smart AMP and Smart Response. Okay, um, so we'll just quickly move along. Don't forget, um, we post these webinars at YouTube, and also we often have information at our website. I'll just leave the address up there for a second for you. Um, it's anz.smarttech.com. So it can be a little hard to find, but um, because there's so many smart websites out there, but as long as we remember, it's anz.smart.com, smarttech.com, and probably a good idea to um, to bookmark that. Okay. Uh, so, Crystal, are there any questions today coming out of um, this webinar? Hi, Kev. Yes, I've got two here. First question is, uh, where can I find more information on the new boards? All right, great, great question. Um, the SMART website, if we just go there and we click on the Education tab, there's a lot of information there about the 2000 and 7000 series. We already have a lot of information with our resellers about the 6000 series, so maybe with the 6000 Asha resellers. Um, but the 2000 and 7000 series, yeah, certainly Smart's website, lots and lots of information there, um, and I believe there's some videos at YouTube as well. So, um, Any other questions, Crystal? Second question is, how do I upgrade to Notebook 17? All right, great question. Um, if you're um, on Smarts, uh, if you're already on a Smart 16.2 and you've reached, recently purchased boards and you've got SLS, you'll just update automatically from uh, when you use your manage updates. Uh, if you were using an earlier version of Smart, um, such as 11.4, I'd just be a little cautious. Um, 11.4 is a seriously old version of Smart Notebook now, and eventually Smart will no longer support it. Like all software, that's just part of the course. We recommend to people, you know, let have a look at Smart 7, 17, Smart Notebook 17, and you can download a trial. But I'll just give you one warning: if you're using a work laptop, I would not suggest you download the trial to the laptop because because you may not be able to revert to 11. If I was going to do a trial of Notebook 17, I'd do it on my home computer, um, and then I'd talk to my reseller. If I, because it's, so, it's such a uh, a, um, a rich environment, I think you'll find that you'll want to be using it. Um, but then just talk to your reseller about how to purchase SLS or contact us at Smart Direct. So, so Crystal, any other queries or questions from today. That's it for today. Thanks, Kev. No worries. Thanks, Crystal. Thank you for attending. Hopefully all your reports are finished. Every school I've been in, that's been the main topic of conversation the last little bit. So, And uh, hopefully we'll see you on the recording next week. As I say, any um, things that you'd like us to talk about, please feel free. Just ping us at the ANZ Smart Tech website. Other than that, Thanks, thanks for attending.